Hello, and welcome to another episode of Boundless Body Radio. I'm your host, Casey Ruff, and today we have a very special episode with a few of my friends, and we are going to review the recent Hack Your Health conference that we all went to. So I am introducing now Tony Pascola, James Lehman, and our new friend, Adrian Gledhill. Thank you guys so very much for being here today. Oh, the pleasure's all mine, Casey, and it's great to see Tony and Adrian again, and of course yourself. Uh, this is awesome, man. What a, what a great thing to do. I'm, I'm really looking forward to the conversation. I am as well. How about you, Tony? Yeah, I'm glad to see everybody again, and I appreciate you uh, inviting us all onto your uh, podcast today. And we all made a new friend in Adrian. So Adrian, welcome onto the show. Hi, thanks for having me, guys. It was so great to uh, meet you guys, have dinner together, and now we get to do this. It's awesome. Uh, it's going to be so much fun. I just want to point out, too, that it's all of our days off, respectively. And so we all showed up. Uh, Adrian, I believe you had family stuff. Uh, James doing Bermuda stuff. I'm sure that was lovely and hanging out with your mom today. And uh, I'm looking outside. It's a beautiful day outside of Salt Lake City. So I just wanted to point it out that it is our day off. Last weekend during Hacker Health was, was all of our days off as well. So, um, yeah, just it just goes to show how excited we all are to talk about this. I did prepare some brief introductions for everybody, so let me just get everybody introduced. Tony Pascola is a returning guest on our show. Be sure to check out Tony's appearances on episodes 369 and 597 of Boundless Body Radio. Tony Pascola is a physical education teacher, sport coach, strong first kettlebell instructor, and personal trainer, and like me, is a carnivore fasting coach at Rivero, a company focused on helping people successfully implement a carnivore diet. He's also the host of the very successful Primal Foundations podcast, where I was honored enough to be hosted as the very first guest. Luckily, he has found much better people to host since then. He's most <laughs> active on Instagram at Tony underscore Primal Foundations. Tony, it's an honor to have you back. Thanks for having me back. And it's you, you number one episode, man. You can't beat that. Oh, man. So I get the strategy, like start out like bottom of the barrel. And then every episode from there just builds and builds and builds. It gets better and better. Good strategy. I like that. <laughs> Uh, James Lehman is also a returning guest on our show. Uh, also to mention, he was also certified as a carnivore and fasting coach at Rivero. Uh, none of us are active coaches on there anymore, but just wanted to point that out as well. Be sure to check out James's first appearances in episode 355 and 595 of Boundless Body Radio. James Lehman is a 51-year-old who was born, lives, and works in the beautiful island of Bermuda. As a vegetarian and vegan, James's health declined so much that he had multiple hospitalizations, autoimmune issues, anxiety, and depression, amongst many other health problems. From listening to podcasts, reading books, and discovering the keto and carnivore diets, James has regained his health and through that process has found happiness and purpose in sharing his experiences. You can find James on his Instagram page at The Carnivorist, which is officially the coolest name ever, and his fantastically successful podcast at the aptly named The Carnivorist Chats. James, welcome back. Casey, so great to be back. And uh, I miss you guys already. It was so great hanging out in Austin with you. And uh, Adrian, again, I know we met uh, the year prior. And of course, Casey, we got to hang out. But having Tony along this time was super special. So I'm, I'm very grateful to be here. And of course, I've hosted you once already in my first season. I think it was episode five. And I already showed you my my wish list on getting you back this season. So I'm looking forward to that chat too. Uh, that's awesome. I got to sit there and not only see the wish list, but the, the notes that you take for all of your episodes. I thought I did my homework. Dude, multiple notebook pages full of notes. I was blown away, dude. Oh, man, I'm telling you, I really like to. And Casey, I, I learned from the best and I learned from you, man. And uh, such a credit to you. And uh, yeah, I really love your podcast. Always have. You were my inspiration getting to start mine. And and I know Tony's gone along this road now and Adrian, too. So we're we're all following in your footsteps, man. So great job as always. Thank you so much for the kind words. I really appreciate it, man. Adrian, our new friend, Adrian Gledhill, is a future guest on Boundless Body Radio. So be on the lookout for her full episode coming soon. Adrian's insane story <laughs> includes a life of battling weight gain and obesity, being a contestant on The Biggest Loser, wow, giving birth to five babies, having weight loss surgery, suffering with multiple chronic conditions, and finally finding some healing with a carnivore diet. Her full episode promises to be epic, and I was so grateful <laughs> to meet my new friend, at the recent Hack Your Health convention in Austin, Texas, you can find Adrian at on Instagram at Adrian K. Gledhill and on YouTube also at Adrian K. Gledhill. Adrian, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. That was epic. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to have all you guys on my brand new show. I'm on like episode three. I know you're on episode like 3000, but we're getting there. <laughs> That's awesome. You posted a clip on um, Instagram the other day that I saw that was a, a clip taken from the Biggest Loser contest. You were in your um, early twenties, 
um, you know, coming from North Dakota, which ironically is where I was born. I don't know if you knew that or not, but I was born in Bismarck. I only spent okay. like a day, year and a half there. Um, but that was quite crazy to look back at you and to see your, you know, your state of health and, you know, the branding around the biggest loser. Like, do you, how do you look back on that experience? Uh, when I saw that, cause I actually purposely don't watch that. Um, it brought tears to my eyes. You know, you even can hear it in my voice, like how inflamed I was and how sad I was. And I'm just so grateful to have finally found something that works and I can see it working for so many other people. So I'm just really grateful. That's really amazing. And again, knowing you in person, I wouldn't have guessed that you were ever overweight a day in your life. So what a journey you've had. And I can't wait to capture that full journey on our show. And um, I think I can speak for everybody else here that we would be absolutely honored to be on your show as well. So looking forward to that. Awesome. Well, we are here today to talk about the recent conference. I thought it would be fun. Maybe, James, this was your idea and I just stole it. But, but anyway, I thought it would be fun to get everybody together and discuss the events. I had no agenda. I didn't take any notes. I just thought it would be fun to um, discuss how it was like, what, what everybody thought about it. Um, the first question I want to ask you guys is about the naming of the conference. And so this conference was, was previously named KetoCon, was known as KetoCon. It was kind of in that kind of direction. Uh, Robert Schweitzer uh, is the host of the show. She did a wonderful job, in my opinion, of hosting the show as well. I think she did an awesome conference. Um, decided to change the name to Hack Your Health rather than continue with the KetoCon name. And so I'm just curious, you guys, what, what do you think? Adrian, what do you think um, about the name change from KetoCon to Hack Your Health? Are we allowed to be honest? <laughs> I don't like the idea of hacking my health. I... I guess, because I don't want any more gimmicks, you know, and I know some people are going to be like, well, you eat sardines. Isn't that a gimmick? I don't think that's a gimmick. I think there, there's different, but I guess it just at you, we're just adding modalities to better health, feeling better. And so I get where they're going with that. I also like that they took out like a certain way of eating out of the title because there's a whole spectrum and, and we're maybe excluding people by naming it something that's a type of diet. So I'm glad that it is much more broad now. What do you think, James? You know, that's an excellent point, Adrian. I was just thinking myself about how a title can be confining in so many ways. And I agree with you. Um, we're all about living better, feeling better. I'm not so sure I'm into hacking. Um, I've been down that road before uh, when I was trying to figure out my way out of all my illnesses on the vegan diet. And I was trying everything except literally the simplest thing, which was changing what I put into my mouth. So I understand that there's some nuances around it. Um, I will be honest as we go along in our conversation and say that so many of the things are geared towards that longevity area. Um, and let's face it, we're all trying to live as long as possible, but so many of these things are, uh, like I say, Dr. Baker calls it the longevity racket. And sometimes that's a little harsh, but let's be honest here. Many of them are. And um, yeah, it's 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 interesting. I, I'm I wish they kind of had geared it towards the maybe I don't know. I, I guess I'm struggling to find out where they were were headed in their mind with the name change. Maybe Tony has a has, a, has an idea or Casey. I'm not sure, but yeah, I agree with you, Adrian. I'm I'm not as big of a fan as as of the name as the simplicity of KetoCon. We knew what we were getting into there. Hack your health. It, it it opens up more possibilities. Whether that's good or bad remains to be determined. We'll discuss further for sure. Yeah, this was my first rodeo, so I. You know, I didn't see it when it was KetoCon, so I wasn't too sure what the differences are. But again, I remember when they did make the name change. But going through, you know, the event space and walking around, it did seem very focused on this uh, cold plunge and red light therapy, which is all good things. But in my eyes, that's supplemental to what we should be doing and getting back to basics and, and, and eating right and exercising should be at the forefront and not kind of focus on like, what's the shortcut way to do this? Well, there is no shortcut way. So I, again, I think James said it as well as like the whole hack your thing. Like I'm not into hacking. Like I can do things and make my life more efficient. Great. But this stuff is a, it's not a one week, two week thing. This is a lifetime, you know, we, we have a lifetime of getting healthy and getting better and getting stronger and you know, metabolically healthy. And this isn't going to, you can't hack your way in two weeks. Like this is a long, long journey. Yeah. 
Well, I appreciate all of your insights. I, I agree. I'm really mixed about the whole thing. Um, I, you know, you're right, Tony, like you're walking around the exhibition hall and you're looking at saunas and cold plunges and light therapies and, and IV drips and all these things like supplements. Like I, I use a lot of those things. Like I, I have a sauna. I'm in my sauna every single night. Like I, I try to get cold showers and cold plunges where I can. And like, I, I'm sitting on my grounding pad. You know what I mean? Like I do a lot of these things, but I, yeah, I guess, I guess I agree with you that like the overall concept of like hacking your way to health is, is tricky. Um, again, knowing that all of those things can help us and I use those things and leverage those things as well. I just, I guess I just don't love the idea of like, oh, we can just take shortcuts to health when it's like all of you kind of alluded to, like it really is a lifestyle change and eating properly that needs to um, kind of be the, the, the driver of, of health. Is that a good way to say that, I guess? I think so. I think that's exactly, that's it in a nutshell, Casey, that um, again, just to harken back to what I went through is uh, I, I tried it all. I, I did the red light therapy. I still do sauna. I still do cold plunges. Um, but foundation for me uh, and still continues to be was, and you saw uh, ironically today, I took a picture of my new weighted vest is movement and nutrition. That's where mm -hmm. I start. Everything else in the terms of the pyramid, uh, you know, it, it falls lower on the scale. They're all an important part, but I wish the title had been more all encompassing and focusing on what the pillars of health are rather than hacking and the little sort of as you said, the supplemental things, Tony. And I mean, what do you think, Adrian? Am, am I going down the wrong rabbit hole here? Or do you agree? When I look at some of the stuff, I do add some of the things like I love the sauna. I've, I've had vitamin drips as I'm not feeling good. You know, these things are great. But if we're doing these things all the time, it's making our life so complicated instead of just eating right, exercising, getting sunlight and breathing good air. I think those are just most important. And the rest of it can get so busy and so expensive. And it's like, we're all just looking for something to spend our money on sometimes, but really we just got to stick to the basics. And I don't know how you would make that exciting in a conference really, but other than the speakers, the speakers did a great job. A lot of the speakers did a great job of, of instilling those exact things. What do you think, Tony? I, I think you, you kind of hit a little bit on a point of like, it's, it gets really expensive. And I think there's this, um, a very big, marketing plan for these huge like these are corporations that can invest into the marketing and get influencers it's like red light therapy great but i can also get some sunlight that's free i could the, these um different mats which are great you know i can go outside and just be on the grass barefoot and, and, and again they're not they're not super it's not super sexy and super cool to like hey i'm sitting outside with barefoot or i'm just getting some sunlight so i think there's things that we can do. Cold plunges, fantastic. I, I don't use them enough. I don't have one with me, but I'll take a cold shower, just turn that sucker really cold. And then, and then I get something. Um, but there's people that are going to lengths because they feel they need it versus mm -hmm. an addition. And I think because they see it on Instagram and they see um, these influencers and they're doing cold plunges and red light therapy, like I have to get these things. Like, I don't, I don't think so. I think you can get by, um, for free yeah yeah i love that input from all you guys you mentioned the speakers which was quite interesting when the when the conference first came up and i saw the list of speakers it was interesting to con even consider a health conference that had maybe like a quarter of the people that i had known or heard about and the and the other you know three quarters of people i had no idea who they were they were experts in other things that like you know kind of get to the, the kind of what we're talking about almost like the fringe of health you know maybe they're presenting on emfs and red lights and things like that the thing that tipped me over to even going to this was really seeing that all of you guys and all my other friends, the attendees were going to go. And that is what influenced my decision more. And the more and more I talked to other att attendees of the show, that seemed to be quite consistent. So was that your experience as well? Adrian, let's start with you. A hundred percent. I went for the people. Honestly, I didn't even go to the speakers. <laughs> I would sit down for like five minutes, take a couple pictures and then Peace out. I have to go. I got to go see my peeps. I got to head to the RV, see my friends. You know, I, I liked the book signings too, because you got to just sit and ask and talk to people. And as you were walking around too, you really got to know some people who've inspired you because they were just walking around saying hi, letting you take pictures. And so that's what I was there for. I was there for the people. How about you guys? How about you, James? 
Oh, absolutely, Adrian. I'm 100% with you. Let me let me preface this by saying I didn't even think I was going to be able to attend this year. So um, it was very, very last minute for me. I recently started a new job. I, I, I'm I lucky in that I had some other business to attend to in Austin early on. So I got that taken care of and then happenstance was able to to attend this year. But for me, I, I browse the the speaking list and I was like, okay, this this should be all right. I mean, many of the folks we've we heard in the previous year, um, seeing Dr. Chafee in person was a big reason. I was like, you know, having interviewed him, I really wanted to catch up with him in person again, outside of him being on the panel, which I didn't end up getting to see him anyway because it was on the last day. But for the most part, I was just mostly excited to catch up with Casey, see Tony. I knew Tony was going to be there for the first time. Um, I had seen that Jake, who we all met, Jake Thomas, was going to be there. But uh, yeah, it's, it was really interesting this year. And, and we'll, we'll, as we get further along in the conversations, just I noticed a definite and uh, I'm, Casey, started, uh, sorry to steal the questions here from you, man, but I noticed a def, definite drop in the amount of carnivores from last year i think well no let me preface that by saying the people that attended last year adrian and casey that we didn't get to see this year there was a, a whole bunch of other people and i think when we get onto the actual presenters the carnivore pop topics were packed like to the gills it was so interesting to see like the carnival panel there was standing room only and then uh, you know the the fasting one standing room only again so it was really interesting to see i don't know casey sorry sorry to steal your thunder but what are your thoughts and, and tony as well same I, I, it's the same trend we noticed last year like they presented mostly nutrition stuff this year it was like kind of 50 50 and nutrition was definitely a big topic and as we've all talked about like we, it's cool that it opened it up to lots of different ways of eating but the thing that was the two things that i noticed that were driving the most were anything carnivore like you said james packed houses uh good presentations the panel um james the, the carnivore panel that you ended up missing was very very good but at the 50 minutes I mean, there's still a long line of people that wanted to ask questions and they were like passing the mic back and forth. So everybody was giving their input and it just took a, like a long time, but it was, it was very, very good. And yeah, anything carnivore, any book signings that were carnivore, you know, Sean Baker and Dr. Chafee, like when did you ever see them hanging out with not like 10 people around them at all time? Like they were always busy. Um, so I thought that was very interesting. And then the other thing that I thought was uh, really driving a lot of the attention was uh, food addiction. They did a food addiction panel that was the same, just kind of packed as far as like the people that decided to go there. So that that is kind of what I noticed, same kind of trend. I mean, Tony, this was your very first one. So you didn't really know kind of what to expect as far as like, you know, are you going to every presentation? Like at Hack Your Health, you kind of have to choose. There's always something going on in two or mm -hmm. three or four different spots. You have to choose where you're going to go. What, what did you think of that and the format and some of the presentations that you checked out? So most of them were great. I would say um, the overarching of the presentations, it was good. I, I mean, you actually were in one of them and it was more of like a coaching one. And as soon as we got in there within five seconds, I looked at you, you look at me and we're like, they're just trying to sell us something. And we just got up and we yeah. went somewhere else. <laughs> and I had seen that. And I told you, like I was at a, a teaching conference earlier this year. And I'm like, man, those guys look familiar. I know them. And they were trying to sell something, a program that they sell to high schools for health classes, doing the same for us um, and on the coaching side. So um, there was that stuff, which I didn't, I wouldn't appreciate like that kind of uh, wasted the time a little bit, but when we got down to some of the panels, right, the carnivore panels were good. Some of the stuff is things that we've heard a, a bunch. So some of it was a little repetitive, but then you had like those nuggets of really good questions that was like, oh, wow, I didn't think of that. Or that's really great information. And you mentioned it already. And I think we all can kind of agree that those of us that were in there is like, the food panel or the food addiction panel was fantastic. It was fantastic. They just allotted a lot of this time, you know, they were like rap trying, they were giving them, you have five minutes, you have four minutes, you have two minutes and they're wrapping that thing up super quick. Cause I know they got to get other presenters in there or what have you, but man, if we could have spent another half hour, 45 minutes just in there and, 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 and talking shop with each other and learning from each other, I would have liked that a little bit more than, oh, that's the time everybody get out. I really appreciate that. Let's go around the horn and talk about free, favorite, like, you know, the presentations or panels that you that you really liked. As far as presentations, Adrian, it doesn't sound like you went to many. Did you go to any of the presentations? Like, did any, like, jump out of you? I went to the food addiction one and I actually asked a question. 
which was, was a great question. That was a cool moment, actually. I was so emotional. I mean, but I think as we're looking at what you're just talking about, people are onto it. The problem here is, and whether people want to admit it or not, it's your relationship with your food and the food that you're eating. Are you eating enough protein from animal sources? And are you dealing with your relationship with food? And so I thought, I thought that one was pretty powerful. And I, if Lynn is, I thought she was amazing. Um, and I, 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 I was like, what is Sykes doing up there? But as he was giving answers, I thought some of his answers were the best on the whole panel. Um, so yeah, I didn't sit through too many because I was like you, like one of the first ones I went to was this attorney one and the whole thing was trying to sell me something. And so I just felt like, so I, I was kind of, I, just, I was there for the people, but how about you, James? What was your favorite one that you went to? You know, Adrian, uh, I'm glad we're we're on this this subject. Um, I like you did not attend as many of the presentations as uh, the past year, um, but I did go to the Regen Agri or Agricultural Panel. I went to the Carnivore Panel, of course. Um, I went to uh, support Chef James Barry in both of his presentations. And while we're on that topic. I don't know about you guys, and this is just kind of a side note. They were kind of presentations. I loved the live cooking this year. I, I thought Courtney mm -hmm. Luna did a great job. I thought Chef James Barry did a great job. It was really lively out there and a lot of fun. And we got to, I got to taste Courtney's food, which was great. Um, so I really enjoyed those and attended those. Um, Casey, you and I, of course, attended Zane Griggs's presentation and I'll put a little pin in that. I have a couple of comments on that that we both noticed. But but for me, do you know honestly and I'm I'm a little bit biased cuz he's a dear friend of mine too, just like if any of you were presenting, I would say they were my favorite, but um Chris Bates, I know the food addiction one was going on next door, but Chris Bates's presentation was one of my favorites. He was such a dynamic presenter. His was entitled uh, please bear with me. Why experimental philosophy serves you better than diet dogma. It was basically figuring out what works best for you and not listening to all the noise that we talked about. And he did such a phenomenal job and I'm so proud of him because it was really, um, you know, he spent a lot of time preparing for it and you can tell, but yeah, for sure, that was my favorite. And uh, I'll pass the baton over to Tony and see what his favorites were. Yeah, I, I really wanted to go that Chris Bates one. I feel like it was it was at the same time as something else. And again, like you said, Casey, you got, you got to choose wherever you're going. Um, I would say the... Um, probably close to um, Adrian's answer is that the food addiction panel. And when Robert Sykes was up there, you getting two very different um, perspectives where one is, it is a food addiction uh, panel. And some are talking about people that, you know, really have this, a struggle relationship with food and then using food for different performances, you know, cause Robert Sykes is a bodybuilder, right? He's talking about how he loses weight, but then how he puts the weight back on and that hits different people in the room. And I think that some people were getting kind of emotional from it. And I was sitting back just listening to all the questions and I was like, wow, like this is such a good panel. So I would say the food addiction one was really good. Probably second would be uh, the carnivore panel because you're never going to see all those heavy hitters up there um, at one time. So that was really great. What about you, Casey? Yeah, same thing. I remember we were at Low Carb Denver in 2023, and it was a panel of like all of these cardiologists. And Amy Berger comments to me like, we should not allow all of those people to be on the same stage at the same time. Like if the stage collapses and all of them die, it's like having the president, the vice president in the same spot. Like it's a really bad idea. Um, yeah, I think the food addiction panel was probably my favorite as well. Uh, we did have a cool moment with Chris Bates where um, Tony and I were sat down. Um, and, and we were waiting for the speaker and the speaker for whatever reason couldn't show up. And so Chris Bates on you, you just like impromptu showed up and went to the stage and just took questions. It was awesome. And I'm like, I, James is not here. I got to go find him. And so I ran downstairs. I did a loop through the entire conference, like up and down and up and down and up and down the list of all the vendors. James is just chilling. I, I guess he heard about it. it was there like two seconds after I left just hanging out in my spot. Like, yeah, man. Thanks for the extra steps, I guess. <laughs> it's like, as I texted, I was texting Casey, Casey, James is here. Come on, come back. He's like, all right, roger that. <laughs> <laughs> From the far end of the conference. Yeah. Thank you guys. That was great. I caught, you know, most of that impromptu Q and A and there were some really interesting questions there that were coming forward, especially the people that, um, Casey, you'll recall the gentleman that had type two diabetes. And I thought Chris, because of, again, the presentation that he was about to make, had he was well equipped to answer those nuanced questions, especially for people that had these challenges and that 
will harken back to my comment about Zane Griggs and he, that gentleman with the type two diabetes was also in there asking these questions and the nuance around all of this and the nuance around diet and the dogma that can creep in. And I've often talked about that there's can be dogma that creeps in the carnivore space. I'm, you know, I've seen it myself. We've all seen it. And um, just how individualistic this whole process is in terms of healing and, and getting to where we need to be, isn't it, Casey? Yeah, yeah. You guys have already mentioned Robert Sykes. Let me tell you why I love Robert Sykes. Robert Sykes will give you honest answers. He's very funny, but he's also very practical. He'll tell you what he thinks about stuff. And again, in a very practical way, how many times did you guys ever hear as I write about in my new program, or uh, if you go to my website and sign up, like he does have a new program that's coming out like right now that he's trying to promote. Did he say one single time anything about getting the information from the program? Or was he just more than willing to offer information? I think all of us have attended those carnivore panels and there was somebody there who had a new program that probably said 17 times. Well, as I talked about in my new program, like we get it. You got a new program and that's how you make your money. We understand, but like Robert does it in a way that he doesn't have to say, like, oh, check out my new program to get the answers. He's just there to give his information. That's just, I love that dude. Same, Casey. And I didn't get the privilege of hearing him again live, but I certainly heard him last year, both on the entrepreneur panel and then another discussion that I had with him offline. And the guy's just so practical in everything that he does. And he's been there. He's done that. He started his own very successful business. He's um, done all the diets. He knows what to do. And uh, yeah, I really appreciate his point of view, hoping to get him on the podcast at some point in the near future too. Can I add, I loved on the fasting and feasting that they gave some success stories and we got to see Todd and Lindy and some of these other people. And it was just so phenomenal to get to see them in real life and say, listen, I gained and lost. Todd said he gained and lost 300 pounds multiple times and he's finally lost weight and kept it off and is continuing to go down. And it's those success stories that that's what I'm there for too, is to meet the people and to see the other success stories and your heart just gets full and you're just like, oh, this is amazing stuff. And it like fills you up to just keep on going. I know that's that. I know that James mentioned like he was looking forward to Anthony Chafee meeting him. He's hosting him on the podcast. But Adrian, who besides the three of us, obviously, but who was there that you you saw and you're like, I need to meet this person, or you were glad to meet? My my life is now complete because I got to meet Dr. Boz and I got to ask her questions. I know that this isn't like I love Stacy from Keto in Court. I, I watch her like TV. She posts like 35 stories a day. I love her. And then uh, Maria Emmerich. How about you guys? How about you, Casey? Yeah, same. I mean, getting to meet, uh, you know, Maria and Craig in person after hosting them on the show was really great. Um, it, it's funny because it's cool to like meet your heroes and to stand next to Dr. Chafee. I've hung out with him and done lunch with him before. And he's such a cool guy. But like just to be shoulder to shoulder with him watching a presentation is super cool and to talk to his girlfriend. But like, frankly, it's like meeting you. It's like people like you. And again, those inspiring stories. How many people did we meet that just had such cool stories? And like, yeah, it's awesome to host your heroes and then meet your heroes. And Dr. Philip Ovedi, I got to meet him in person for the first time. And like, it's, mm -hmm. it's awesome. But it's it, I, to me, it's also like kind of more cool to meet all the people like on the ground who are kind of going through it. You know, James, thoughts? Man, I got to tell you, Casey, you know, last year I got to meet one of my big, big heroes um, who wasn't there. And I'll talk about that in a second. But this year, for sure, I got to meet another one of my heroes, this guy from Chicago called Tony Pascola. The guy is uh, amazing. And I, I went all the way to KetoCon and all I got was this t-shirt. Nice. Uh, <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Um, no, I'm being serious, man. I, and, and like we're saying, you know, I, I jest, but Seeing you guys again in person was the highlight for me this year. I mean, obviously, Dr. Chafee was great, great to catch up with him. He's such a stellar presenter. But, you know, I just like to touch on this subject for a second. It's it's a sensitive subject, but I think it needs to be talked about a little bit as we we get here. And, you know, we just uh, were talking about how Robert just gives it to you straight. And I'm going to give it to you straight. It's It was interesting to me that the two people last year, Adrian and Casey, that called out the keto space on stage were not there this year. Um, I'm just putting that out there. And it was also interesting to me that the carnivore people didn't have any really booths besides Peterson Farms. I mean, we remember carnivore snacks and carnivore bar being there mm -hmm. last year. 
and they were not both there. I was disappointed to see that. I know that Carnivore Snacks has been through a, a heck of a time recently with um, some legal stuff, so I wasn't surprised. I, I was uh, sorry that Philip uh, Meese couldn't make it uh, this year, but you know the the two presenters. Um, it was disappointing to me, and that person I was talking about from last year, who's my hero, is of course Sally Norton. And and Sally got up on stage and said, "Listen, a lot of these keto treats are filled with stuff that are potentially harmful for you. Not only." potentially a lot of sugar, but oxalates in general. I mean, this is just, it is almond flowers, almond products, nut butters. They're all in the keto treats. And sadly she wasn't there. And of course we all remember Dr. Barry and, and him not uh, stating the same, but uh, yeah, yeah, it was uh, just an interesting space. I mean, Adrian, what are your thoughts? And Casey, I know Tony, you weren't there last year. You want to go first, Casey? <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree with you. Um, I agree with you. I it's I, I have so much respect for people like Ken Berry. Vinny Tortorich has done it in the past and has not been invited back. Sally Norton did it last year, barefoot, by the way, on stage, which was just so savage. To to say, like, look over at that other end of the room where all the vendors are, and a lot of that stuff is a way for people to make a buck. And I get it. Like I I recommend some of that stuff. And I I you know, in a pinch, people can use that or they can use keto bricks, for example, as a, as a way to get some fat and get away from sugary stuff. And, and so I, I appreciate the utility of all that. But again, it's, it's so savage to get on stage and say, like, look, a lot of these things are not that great for you. You should, you know, kind of eat real food. And, and so, yeah, I, I really respect it. It's a bummer that they don't get invited back when they do that from this, the, the way that it sounds, but it was, yeah, very much less of the, you know, the carnivore kind of vendors, even though again, all the interest that I saw it was definitely in the carnivore direction. I didn't see lines for saunas and cold plunges and supplements and probiotics and IVs. I saw lines for carnivore stuff. You know what I mean? Tony, mm -hmm. again, hard to, hard to reference, but as you're hearing that, what, what, what do you think about that? I mean, I would love to see Sally Norton. I would love to see Ken Berry and the fact that, you know, I'm traveling to a place in a space where we have to explore all of these different options and different opinions and different diets and different modalities of fitness and what have you. And it kind of stinks because as like a consumer of the convention, right, I, I'm, I'm going there because of whatever, you know, you know, people's opinions aren't landing the right way or people don't like somebody or the, what they said, they're not allowed back. So now I can't, I, as a consumer of the convention, I'm not able to see them. So again, I, I want to see Sally Norton. I want to see, you know, listen to her talk and Ken Barry, but um, if they didn't get invited back, I, I don't have that opportunity. Yeah. So really good point. I have two things. Number one, I want to thank the people who were brave enough to come back despite not agreeing with certain things. Like a great one is Judy Cho, because last year there was a carnivore panel and they kept saying like, if carnivore is not working for you, you just got to carnivore harder. And Judy's trying to spread the message that sometimes it's environmental, sometimes it's something else. And they didn't spread that message last year. So she came back this year, even though it was tough and continue to spread the message. So I appreciate anybody who's continuing to come back and just keep standing up if they're still invited. And then number two, I do wish they would be more strict with what they allow in there. I don't like that those keto treats are in there. That's why keto doesn't work for me because of the almond flour cookies, because of the caramels, because of the that stuff. That's the stuff that tri triggers tons of people. And I, I'd wish that it wasn't even in there because... Because ultimately, that's kind of the downfall of the entire keto diet is those things right there. And I also wish, if they're listening, next year in the little cafeteria area, they should have some beef. This year, they had disgusting looking chicken and it had all, it just the food over there looked horrible. I bet they didn't sell like any of it. Thank God for Peterson's and holy cow beef and and uh, across the street, uh, blacks and yeah. What did you guys think of the products? Was there anything? I want to bring up one more product. I heard people complaining about knickknack. Do you guys know about it? I, so I, I use it. Thank you. Me too. Because it can, it can really help some brain things and it can really help people with long haulers. That's why I, I take a micro dose and I've looked into this and I just thought it was, I thought it was awesome they were there. I've heard other people complaining, why the heck is nicotine here? Well, 
if you look into nicotine, it's the story is a little different, but go ahead, Tony, tell me, what do you take it for? And what are your thoughts on knickknack? I, I would say I, I, for a couple of different reasons, we've passed, we literally passed by, um, the knickknack uh, booth. And I was talking to, um, Casey, I don't know if James, you were next to us, but I looked at Casey because Casey was a hockey player. I'm like, did you ever like chew back in the day? Cause hockey players are like notorious for chewing tobacco. And he's like, nah, not really. He's like you. I'm like, yeah, bad. I used to like dip tobacco high school all the way till I was outside of college, like a very long time. And that was just like a bad habit. And that was just like a lot of athletes did it. And I don't know why I just, it just became a bad habit for me. And I try to get off of that. And then for me, like it's it, it twofold, right? If I want that, if I go to a ball game or I go somewhere and it's just like my buddies are thrown in lips of tobacco and I'm just kind of like, ah, I really don't want to do that. This is like a great alternative because I'm like throwing something in. I It's kind of going through that motion. It's familiar. Um, so there's that one aspect of it, you know, like having a non-alcoholic beer. Like you don't want to drink, but I'm going to have a non-alcoholic beer and I'm going to simulate that, that stimulus of like drinking with friends. So that's like one piece of it. But two, it's also the cognitive function. I really believe if I like throw like, again, a six milligram, a three milligram of nicotine, there is a little bit of a cognitive function to it. And I feel a little bit more alert. Uh, I'm not preaching it to everybody. Like you have to be deconnected. No, like, but if that's something that um, you want to self explore, like, and, and see if you like the differences or not great. If, if not, great but yeah it seems like yeah a lot of people are like why is why is there like because they think it was tobacco i think that's another piece of like they thought it was like chewing tobacco like, why is chewing tobacco at hack your health yeah interesting really good point okay james you brought something up we put a pin in it let's talk about the zane griggs presentation um i, I tony i don't even think you were there yet adrian i don't think you caught that one so james can kind of explain what happened how it went um i thought the presentation was very good we talked about kind of some of the pros and cons of the presentation. So James, take it away. Like, tell us about that presentation and what you thought. Yeah, absolutely. Casey, but let me, let me just go back a little and, and I want to just clarify something before I don't know for sure that uh, Sally and Dr. Barry were not invited. I just thought it was interesting that they were not there. I'd also like to sure. preface what I'm saying uh, as well is that I'm very grateful to Robin and the Hack Your Health KetoCon organizers for putting on an event like this because it allows us to come together. It allows all of us, even if we don't necessarily agree with the presentations, as people with like-minded ideas and, and friendships to come together in a central place. Now, I say that all to say is that, in my opinion, this Hack Your Health it encompasses a lot of different things. And I think that's why they gave it the, the title. And Casey, I'll get to Zane Griggs in a second. I apologize. I'm going on a tangent, but it all is related. I think they need to really make a decision on what direction they're headed because it was clear to all of us. I think Tony, Adrian, and yourself, Casey will agree that, and we've already talked about it, that the carnivore panels, everything else was the most popular and they were even the most popular last year. I'm not saying the whole event has got to be carnivore. Maybe it's there are more carnivore centered presentations. Maybe there are more breakout rooms with carnivores because it's clearly what people want. Now, in relation to Zane's presentation, Casey, I think you and I both looked at one another as you did in Tony and you're in the presentation where you're both like, yeah, people, there's an amount of confusion when you attend an event like this. And there's so many conflicting presentations on what is right for the person. And we're lucky enough that we host our own podcast. We've had the privilege of talking to people that are in the know. We've made our own decisions and we are getting ourselves into a healthy state. I really felt for the person that was struggling that came to that conference and would go to one presentation, hear one thing, and then drop in another presentation and be told something completely different. And I thought Zane did a great job. He had some really interesting points. And I also disagreed with some of the things that he was saying. And then we had a gentleman with type 2 diabetes getting up saying, well, I was just in another presentation where I was told I shouldn't go near any of this stuff as a carnivore to, to eliminate it that would basically ameliorate or get rid of my type 2 diabetes. But then Zane is saying, no, 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 you need carbohydrates in your diet. You've got to have a certain amount. These are the things when, as a carnivore, and I'll listen to the other panel, we're told, no, carbohydrates aren't essential. You don't really need them. This is what you need to heal, you know, uh, insulin resistance and, and help heal your type 2 diabetes. Those are my thoughts. And again, that was a very long-winded way, but 
Tony, Adrian, welcome your guys' thoughts on this, and, and please tell me if I'm really off base here. No, that's good. Let me provide a little bit of context before we get your answers. So the, the talk was called, uh, I, uh, well, his the book that he wrote with Dr. Barry was called Kicking Ass After 50. Zane is, dude, a, a brick shit house. This guy is so ripped, it's super strong. And he's talking about like the optimizing muscle building and talking about like, again, it's not, he's not promoting high carbohydrate, but having carbohydrates, I want workout times to really maximize building muscle. So Again, like if you are looking to maximize muscle and you're metabolically healthy, what he's the words he's saying, they, they all really like ring true. Like he's not, I don't think he was wrong about anything. But then I look around the room and I say, well, okay, there's like maybe like five or six metabolically healthy people in here. So it's just, it's, it, it's like James said, it's a little confusing for the average consumer. And when the guy with type 2 diabetes asks this question, he's like, well, I can't, I, I don't think I should have carbohydrates because I'm type 2 diabetic. And, Zane goes, no, 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 take care of your diabetes first. Like, don't worry about the carbohydrate stuff. It's just, again, it, when you're talking about the people that want to maximize and optimize, and it's just such a small part of the presentation, at least of the people who were there, I think people got a little bit confused. So, okay, so what do you guys think? Adrian, let, let's hear your opinion first. Okay, I've come up with what they should call this. I think that I'm going to steal Tony here. I think they should rename this the Primal Health Conference, and we should- I like it. <laughs> We should um, focus on, you know, some of these modalities can still be there because, you know, like the red light therapy, we're mimicking the sun, you know, the cold punches, we're mimicking um, living in a colder temperature, maybe jumping in the lake, you know, and, and then we talk about the meat, we talk about why these things, you know, we head towards the primal route. And I, I that's where I think we should head with this. But and I agree with James, too, though, that this is just a really difficult one, because you can't win, no matter which lane you pick, someone's going to be, you know, but per personally, as we're seeing here, everybody's starting to head towards, let's fix our relationship with food. Let's eat healthier primal foods. Let's go. It seems like everybody's going that direction. So I think that's right. I think, what do you think, Tony? I think we should name it the primal, uh, conference. Just don't let Mark <laughs> Sesson know about this and, uh, <laughs> all the primal, uh, blueprint people. But, uh, I, so I, when I'm listening to that story that you guys were talking about and, and I was in the room when the person with, I believe it was the type two diabetes asked a question and he got the answer. And I remember you two looking at each other. I'm like, there's an inside joke here or something. Like I didn't understand it, but, um, James and Casey looked at each other like, oh yeah, that's a whole different answer. And my thing with that is like these conferences, they're great. And, but also it, you're there to listen and, and learn, but it's also like, they can't, they're, you're not working directly with that speaker. They don't know you specifically. They don't know the ins and outs. So it's really hard for them to give you the answer that you want to hear or need to hear. Um, they're going to just be very broad in general because they don't know what your blood work is. They don't know what your, you know, what your history is, medical history. So everybody's going to be different. And and I look at that and I think about, and I'm going to use you, James, like listen to James's story, Right his story, you know, on my podcast, Casey's podcast, whatever. And then future Adrian's podcast, you listen to his story. And if he would have went carnivore harder and that somebody was on the panel, be like, yeah, just eat more fatty red meat. That's not good. That wasn't good for James. Right. And you could speak about it too. Um, but the one thing that he did was he had to pivot a little bit and slowly like, he's like adding different things in that are carbohydrates. Cause that's what he needed specifically. And when we go to these conferences and you listen to the speaker, some things might work for you. Some might not, but it, it's really hard for people that have like very individual questions and get individual specific answers when that you're, you're in the middle of a Q and a. Okay. Excellent. The other thing I wanted to address is some of the movies that were shown uh, during the conference. There were three separate ones maybe more, but I, I, three in particular that stood out. The first one, uh, Brad and Maggie Jones, uh, episode one of Cancer Revolution. Um, I've seen it before. Uh, we got to watch that. Uh, we had Brian Sanders revealing episode one of, I, I don't know what it's going to be called, but it's uh, Peak Human or Sapien or whatever his kind of concept is. A uh, movie that's been in the works for a very long time. Third one I knew nothing about uh, was Healing Humanity, I believe it was called, um, with, uh, oh boy, now I'm going to forget their names. So I'm not even going to try Adam and Carrie, I believe, or something. Anyway, um, they, they kind of premiered their films. Any comments from you guys on the films that were um, premiered at the show? Did you like them? Did you not like them? Uh, what, any general thoughts on any of those? Sure. I'll go Casey, because I didn't get to see the last one. I saw the first one on the cancer. And then I obviously saw 
uh, Food Lies is the name of the series or, or the presentation from Brian Sanders. And for me, I thought he did a great job. I thought it was uh, great to finally see something coming out from him. I know he talked and teased that for quite some time. So to see the first episode of it was really great. And it definitely left people hungry for more. I was saddened to hear that he didn't have the funding or the backing to really get the rest of the series out. He had hoped it would go to Netflix or something like that, but it would certainly be worth putting the information out that he had there um, because there's simply nothing else like it out there in this space, this type of series and with the guests that he had. So hoping and looking forward to hopefully the rest of that season that he's got. I think he said he had like eight or 10 episodes in the can ready to go or close to being ready to go, but just was looking for some funding. But yeah, that's my my two cents on those presentations. It was a nice little break to have those presented. I know Brian did his during the lunch hour, so it wasn't as well as attended as it possibly could have been because everyone was across at Terry Black's, but a lot of folks stayed and saw it, it was great. Tony? I just want I want to say, I think that we go should ahead. all go to those websites and help out because we need, we need that. We need to counteract all the propaganda that's out there on the opposite side and have those. And so I went to the Healing Humanity um, dinner and I'm just going to say, I think the best part of all was just the dinners. I think it was my favorite was getting to sit down with people, hear their stories, hear how they're going, hear how excited they are. That was my favorite. But so Healing Humanity, just like Food Lies, they are also hoping to, first they're going to make a movie and then they're going to make a series. Um, they're hoping and, but they need funding because this isn't, you know, there's no big backers for this big pharma and big food are not into this. So, uh, so if you guys could all go to healing humanity, that would be awesome. And then I just want to say, I bought the virtual replay replay. So once that gets released, I'm really excited to see all the speakers. What about you, Tony? I thought, I thought the food lies was really great. And me, and I think I mentioned it to Casey when I sat down to of it's, it's the way that it's done. I would love like to show that to like the parents at my school, like, you know, like it's just very good. And it, with the infographics and it's just, as you're watching it, you're like, Oh wow. There's like this other aspect of food that I didn't even think about. And they also like touch upon like exercise, not only nutrition, but the exercise component, which one of the things they said in the first five seconds was like, yeah, you can't walk down the street within like five miles and not see three or four gyms. But yeah, we're the, most unhealthy. So I was like, that just resonated with me right away. I was like, oh, this, this is cool. Uh, Healing Humanity was really awesome. I, I love uh, the way that they, um, you know, that they're, they're following people. It's real life stories. It, yes, there's some science behind there, but it was just like more of like, you are connected to the people on the screen. And you're like, wow. Um, so those were the two big ones that I really liked. What about you, Casey? Yeah. So my, my tricky thing about the food lies thing is that it's taken so long to come out and, you know, the crowdfunding has been years and years that money has gone in to finally see something is great. I, I wish there would be a little bit more of a trade off of like, okay, maybe you don't need as much production value and then you can get that thing done and get it pushed out there. I also felt a lot of sympathy and empathy, I guess, when, when, when he was saying like, look, I'm not a filmmaker. It's just two of us. We're trying to get this out. I, that must be really hard. Like the other people that made the other films are filmmakers. So, you know, that's a little bit more in their wheelhouse. So I, I understand that I, again, I do get a little frustrated that it's taken so long to get anything out at this point. Um, James, you really missed out on that healing humanity thing. That was quite special. It was really cool. He put a montage together of all like the experts that he talked about. And like, as he was, um, and, you know, wrapping up his interview, he, he would say every single time, word for word, it was super funny. Hey, I don't want to put you on the spot, but do you think you'd like come back and help us with with this movie? And he would say it to Dr. Eid and Dr. Chafee and Dr. Ovedia. And, and sure enough, all of them, again, like, the comment, like, I, not to put you on the spot, but do you think you'd help out? And all of them were like, oh, I'd love to help. It would be great. And just hearing the story of, uh, was it John, his name, carnivore in Australia, uh, around, not Australia, Alaska, who was 700 pounds, could, didn't leave his house, like could not get up out of his chair and couldn't really leave his house for like years and is now on the journey and to see him. And they went all the way up to Alaska to interview him and they're going to follow up with him in a year. That was, that was pretty special. That was pretty, pretty cool to see. These stories and these documentaries are why eating meat like this isn't just like some diet. You look and you go, oh, that food is literally, you look at food totally different. And when you see the stories, you just see the healing and you just, you think about everything totally differently. And so that's why these things help to not just be, it's not just a diet. 
it's not just a fad. It's, it's like, I want to be healthy and I want to be happy and I want to feel good. So I'm grateful for these people for doing it. Great point. Uh, and Adrian, I just wanted to touch on something that you said, and Tony talked about um, my my story. And for those uh, listeners who may not know my story, go back and listen to Casey's interviews with me and Tony's interview with me. But the reason that I got in the the rough shape, it's an understatement of the year that I did, is because I watched the propaganda pieces, um, the, the films uh, on veganism and plant-based eating. And as many, many others do, they sort of fall victim to it. And and I, I agree with Adrian that there needs to be some balance in this space. We need more. I know Vinny's done some great documentaries. There's some other great ones out, but compared to the amount of the uh, plant-based eating propaganda pieces, no, we, we definitely need them in this space. So that's just a comment I wanted to agree with Adrian on. Excellent. Well, I appreciate that insight. Let's um, Let's maybe share some like favorite stories as you reflect back on the weekend that we just had. Tell me some of your like favorite moments, favorite stories. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to steal the stage and go first. One of my favorite moments was when Tony got in town. James and I had been hanging out all day. We were at dinner, um, you know, just hanging out. Uh, Tony showed up. Uh, awesome to meet him in person, which was great. We all went uh, to a barbecue joint called Cooper's uh, based on James's recommendation. That smoked ribeye was incredible. And as we were all sitting there talking, um, you know, uh, Tony is – talking about like how he's been to Austin before he was staying in some tiny home in Austin. I was like, Oh, that's funny. I'm staying in a tiny home. Sure enough. We find out that we are staying in exactly the same spot. He, he, Tony stayed there four years ago in December of 2020 when his school shut down and he didn't want to get stuck in 20 degree below weather in Chicago. So he bounced, went to, went to um, Austin, rented this tiny home that I eventually stayed at. The owner remembers you, by the way, she thought it was so funny that you would cook so much meat. She had to like replace the propane for the, for the barbecue in the two weeks that you were there. Um, she was very disappointed when she said like, Hey, invite him over for like a steak. He, he can come over and hang out. And I'm like, Oh yeah, I think he's got other plans or whatever. She was very disappointed that he didn't come back, <laughs> which was really funny. The tiny home was tiny. And this was my first introduction into the incinerate toilet. So if you take the words incinerator and the words toilet, and you smash them together, you get incinolet. And so what you do is you put a, a filter down into the bowl, you do your business, then you close the lid with a foot pad, you push down, the thing opens up, you hear a plunk as your stuff falls down, and then you push a button, and for 90 minutes, this thing runs, you hear this, mm, and it starts to like heat up your stuff, and it turns it into ash. And the woman who was hosting was very environmentally, uh, you know, worried about like wasting water. Maybe she had concerns about sewage or whatever. This literally turns your stuff into um, ash. I had never seen one of these before. And I can say like the number one question I've gotten all week as I've been telling my clients about it is, what did that smell like? And I was like, uh, you know, first of all, I'm very lucky that I'm on a zero fiber carnivore diet because I never went number <laughs> two once. <laughs> I, I peed in it like two or three times. And I would say it basically smells like if you peed on a campfire, it kind of like if you get close to it, it kind of smells like that. Tony, what was your experience with the Incinolet? Well, I was you were there for a weekend. You can get by. I was there for two weeks. <laughs> so I had to use the Incinolet for ones and twos. <laughs> and first of all, the host, um, I, I, what's her name again? Rebecca, I believe. Rebecca, she was awesome. She every time she she had like a dog and like she'd come out, she's like, "You're grilling again." I'm like, "Yeah, I'm grilling." And she's like, "Okay." And um, it was it was really funny. And I remember just like the shower is like a tin shower, and you can like barely wash yourself in there. But I was like, "All right, I'm here for two weeks. I can't be in Chicago anymore." And this is like the the cheapest thing I can find. And it was it was a very unique. Um, the insula toilet, whatever it's, I mean, it, after a while, you don't even really like notice it, but uh, it does smell like a campfire in there. So it's kind of, it's kind of weird. Adrian said before the conversation, she was like, what, what's an incinolet? We were like, oh, you just wait. We've got some toilet talk. And Adrian said, she's always down for some toilet talk. So hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> One of my best friends is, uh, she's a, a home birther, a body worker. And I went to her house and she has a composting toilet in her house. And it's a really nice house, but it's an actual composting toilet. Do you guys know? Like no. you go potty and you throw some shavings on top of it. And then every once in a while you swap the bucket out. 
<laughs> uh, so I'm all about the environmentally friendly people. That incinerate, uh, incinerate toilet doesn't look too bad now, does it, Casey? <laughs> yeah, because you don't actually have to take a bucket every once in a while and put it on the pile. But, you know, I, I end up every time I go on one of these vacations, I don't think this is going to end up happening anymore. But I end up staying with someone I've never met. We're in a group together. Maybe we've chatted, but we've never met. And I ended up with the coolest woman in the whole entire. There's pictures of her putting um, Sean Baker in a headlock. She ended up in a whole bunch of people's reels. She's just the life of the party, the sweetest person. This is why I spent like a couple minutes, maybe a minute with each big person. But I spent most of my time with like you know, all the rest, the normal people. And she was just the, she, I ended up with the best roommate and you know how, you know, she's also the best roommate. I warned her. I said, I'm really weird. And she goes, it's fine. I'm sure this is, you know, no, no, I I'm doing chronic inflammatory response syndrome protocol. And I do coffee enemas. Like I am really weird. And she was like, Oh, no big deal. So I have a little poop top for you too, but how about, oh, and <laughs> Thank you. I got one more. I want to tell you though, last year, my favorite night of the whole thing was having dinner with James and Sally and a whole bunch of people. Like it was life changing to get to be at that table. And like the lighting was perfect and the food looked delicious and the company was awesome and everybody was so happy. And this year I feel like I got to have that like three times that uh -huh. to me, the dinners are the best, but okay, James, what do you got? What's your favorite memory? Adrian, for those that are listening to this episode and are not watching it on YouTube, your face was priceless as Tony and Casey were talking about this toilet, <laughs> just the look on your face. And again, it is one of my favorite moments. I was literally in tears laughing as we shared, and it was a wonderful, like that smoked ribeye from Cooper's, yes, sitting with Casey and Tony, but watching those two realize that they were staying in the same place and were, were experiencing the incinolet or whatever it's called <laughs> was priceless. I was crying with laughter. And um, you're absolutely right. It was the dinners. Um, even, uh, you know, not even, but alongside the Ironworks uh, barbecue that um, we went to, Casey and Tony, that uh, Jake was there, Lisa Wiederman's uh, barbecue. That was really, really get, uh, great. And... Um, I got to sit next to Jake Thomas's mom for the evening, which was fabulous. And to have this discussion with Jake's mom and just talk about my grandmother and her and how she found carnivore through her son and is just thriving now was just, those are the moments that you, you hold on to. And I agree, Adrian, that dinner, I mean, with Sally, I tell people about that all the time. We had all our friends around that table and we were just talking about everything, oxalates, family, friends, and those are the moments that make everything so special. And uh, yeah, those those are definitely my top two moments for sure. <laughs> Jake's mom Tony. is gorgeous. She's cool. She was way cool. She was awesome to talk to. Tony, first ever conference, what were some of your favorite memories? I, I mean, I'd have to agree with pretty much everybody and, and just hanging out with the people. I was a little nervous coming in because, like, I haven't met James in person. I haven't met Casey in person. I haven't met anybody. So I'm thinking, like, I'm going to go there. I'm going to be by myself. I'm going to be sitting down by myself. And it was great. Like, I hung out with you guys the whole weekend, um, went to the dinners, got to just – talk shop and things we talked about carnivore but we talked about life we talked about everything and i got to be connected with everybody i got to meet adrian and adrian so somebody put a message i got i gotta look back whose it is but um somebody messaged me they're like hey we're having a meetup in naperville are you gonna come and i was like yeah i'll, I'll if you're inviting me i will be there naperville's just like outside of chicago she's like adrian's gonna be there i'm like no way and I'm like that. I'm like, I'm for sure going now. So it's just Aww. like the connections of people and, the, you know, we are in our silos at home with ourselves and our, in our own our lives. And then, but we're out here doing the work and we're, we're, we're talking to people and we're reaching people and just to have these connections with like-minded people and, and have these conversations was like the biggest highlight and to hang out with everybody was awesome. So I guess kind of last question for all of you. I, I, I get this from my clients whenever I come back from one of these conferences. It's like, what did you learn? And, I, you know, getting back from the collaborative science um, <clears throat> conference that I went to in March with Dave Feldman in Las Vegas, and we're talking about very specific lean mass hyper responder cholesterol patterns. It's like, holy smokes, I learned a ton of different things. 
I would say I probably didn't learn a ton of new information for this one, but that was my favorite part. And whether or not we all decide to go to this specific conference again, or whether all of us just collectively decide like, hey, we're going to Memphis in October. There's not going to be any talks, but we're all just going to get together and hang out and do whatever. Like I would be just as, um, I guess, likely to go to something like that as I would to this conference. Um, any other kind of comments around that, James? Let's start with you. Yeah, I agree with you, Casey. I mean, a lot of the stuff I had heard not only last year, but from talking with our podcast guests and listening to, but um, I was really, I learned quite a bit. And as you know, this uh, presentation was another one that I forgot to mention was Craig Emmerich's presentation on glucose. I learned a ton that I didn't know before about the the details of gluconeogenesis and insulin resistance and glucose and and its role. Um, I'd heard a little presentations before, but I just thought he did a tremendous job of putting everything together. And he was so understandable and, and did a great job of just taking his time and walking people through that. So that was a big one for me. And uh, Tony, what about you? I kind of, I'm kind of leaning like George Casey's answer of a lot of the things like you've mentioned, like we've, we've heard it. It was, I, I walked away with a couple nuggets of information that I didn't really know. Um, I, but the biggest thing was getting to meet the different people and the different movers and shakers in this space. Uh, there's some people will name drop somebody. I'm like, who is that? And then, then I find out who that is like mm -hmm. healing humanity. i never even, I know nothing about that. And like, now I'm like going to be following them and we can't wait to see the documentary and, um, so that was the big thing is just meeting some of the guests in person that I've had on my podcast, like to literally, I walked up and I saw Eric Reynolds and he was like, he was like the mayor of that whole thing. Like he's just rubbing elbows with everybody. And he just comes up and hugs me. He's like, what's up, Tony? And we got to hang out and I turn around and Jake Thomas is right there. What's up, Jake? And like, that was the cool part. And I, and I agree with Casey was saying like, if we all go and like just say, hey, we're going to do this meetup or we're going to go here, um, I think um, I want to look, look forward to go. I know it's not this September, but next September is meat stock. I think that where we get everybody together um, in a space, a little bit smaller space, and it gets a little bit more intimate um, and we can have conversations. Uh, that's what I'm looking forward to the most in the future. Well, hopefully Sean Baker will show up to that one so you can have a rematch of the lift you did. You almost beat the one and only Sean Baker on a lift, Tony. I I feel like if I – that's the only reason I would go back. I Just so I can, I can go try to break the record, I got to train a little bit more. But uh, I, I came close. I got 38 on the bamboo press. There's some questionable people ahead of me, but uh, 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 Robert Sykes got 39. But apparently they put him – but he, they had him on a timer. Some other people weren't on a timer. So he got 39 in a minute. I think I took longer than a minute. So mine has an asterisk as well. So, but uh, that's, you know, I didn't want to bring that up, but thanks for reminding me. No, no, yeah, we have welcome. to talk about this though, Casey, because Tony, Tony had Ben Greenfield, who he's being very modest, who went before him. And, and yeah, I think Tony, you might have put, and Ben, if you're listening to this, Tony's form was, uh, you, he put you to shame, my brother. So you got to get that form right. You may have had more repetitions, but my brother, Tony was crushing it out there. <laughs> appreciate it. I appreciate it. <laughs> it was so funny to see Tony like going over and attending some of the kettlebell things. And before long, he's like instructing some of the other people on how to do lifts properly. Like that guy is in his natural environment right there. He's in his element for sure. So of course you were going to help anybody who is there doing the workouts with you. It was really cool to see. I was so excited. Like they had a kettlebell and like within five seconds, I was like, Hey, Casey, like videotape me real quick. I found a kettlebell and I was doing stuff with kettlebells and I was excited and I got to meet uh squash fitness is out in Austin. And I got to meet a couple of their trainers uh, that I got to leave on Monday and I got to like go there and work out in the morning and just like go hang out, work out, say hi to the trainers and just um, rub elbows with those kind of people. So it was great. Um, Adrian, what about you? I am totally in this for the people. Like you guys are my people. I have been a total health, health nut weirdo my probably my entire life. I mean, in high school, I was in like 10 different sports and I was the captain and I'm just really competitive and I just want to feel my best and be strong. And it's so awesome. Like 11 years ago, I quit drinking and it was really hard to find people who were like me who choose not to drink because it doesn't make them feel good. And it's just so nice to be around people who are like, listen, that doesn't make me feel good either. What does is like lifting and 
getting sun and I just, I'm in it for the people. And I, I love this conference because it is so many people. And so you get to see all the people, almost all the people, so many people. So that's, what's great. And that's why I'll probably come back just because it draws such a huge crowd. But I do love like the Napervilles where we're just going to show up. We're going to hike, we're going to eat some meat. There's probably going to be 20 to 50 people and you really get to know people. And I have to write down what this meat stock is. I got to say, so I'm also this year plan on going to Keto Palooza. I hear that's a really intimate, awesome one. So I'm excited about that. And then I'm really spoiled. I'm going to go to the two crazy keto friendship cruise. So you guys should sign up for that because cruising together and, you know, all you can eat meat and there's a track and sun and I'm just throwing that out there. I'm in it for the people. Uh, so I love that. I love that. Yeah. It's so hard to pick and choose which ones you're going to. And I always like, ah, oh, it's too expensive or too far. Then I start to see the pictures of my social media of all of you guys having a riot. I'm like, damn it. I should have gone. <laughs> <laughs> uh guys yeah. i have thoroughly enjoyed this conversation if we make this a habit and do this again one day or keep a, a, a practice where we're doing this regularly i would not complain one bit i have enjoyed every second of this conversation i really appreciate all of you coming on your days off to kind of talk about this um let's go around the horn and just tell people where they can go to find you and connect with you and your work adrian why don't you start I'm Adrian, spelled the boys way, A-D-R-I-A-N, K Gled Hill on Instagram and YouTube. Awesome. We'll tag that in the notes for sure. Uh, thank you, Adrian, for being part of this conversation. This was super fun. Uh, Tony. Uh, Tony Pascola. You can find me on Instagram at Tony underscore Primal Foundations, uh, or you can go to my website, primalfoundations.com. Excellent. And start on episode two of your podcast and work up from there. Is, is it the way to approach it? <laughs> Make sure you listen to the number one podcast, the first podcast with Casey Ruff. Uh, in all seriousness, I was so honored to be your first guest. We, I know we had coached um, and did some work in the past, but it was it was such an honor to be on your show, man. I really appreciate it. Same with uh, you, James. Such an honor to be on your show as well. James, where can people go to find you and connect you and your work? First of all, I'd like to say I love the idea of us reconnecting in this format. And I think in the interest of, of the day, we should call it Casey's Primal Panel. There we go. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> wow. I like so, it. So we can have the Primal uh, Panel discussions or something like that. But yeah, folks can find me at the underscore carnivorist on all the social profiles, except for Facebook. I'm not there or TikTok, but I am on Instagram. I am on Twitter. I, I am on YouTube at, at the underscore carnivorist. And then obviously carnivorous chats on all your podcast listening places, Spotify, Apple podcast, etc. Excellent. Awesome. Well, thank you, James. Like I said, we'll tag that in the notes. Guys, thank you so very much for taking the time to do this. This was a magical conversation. I so treasure my friendship with each of you. And, and yeah, just thank you so very much for taking the time to be on our show today. We really appreciate you all. Thanks, thank Casey. You. Thank you, Casey. Thank you guys so much. And this has been another episode of Balanced Body Radio.